What's it like to have a new face? That's a question that only a very few people in the world can answer. One of them is with us tonight. Eight years ago, Carmen Blandon Tarleton, a nurse in rural Vermont, was attacked by her estranged husband. She was left with 80 degree burns after he doused her with industrial strength alkali. Doctors described as a, the most horrific injury a human being could suffer. By the time she was on the list for a face transplant, she'd been in surgery 58 times. Two years ago, she endured 17 hours of surgery to get a new face, only the seventh person in the US to do so. And she joins us tonight from New Hampshire. Uh, good evening. Thanks very much indeed for joining us tonight. When, Thank you. Thank you for having me. When the attack happened, you were then put in a medically induced coma for three months. And I mean, you were a nurse for 20 years. But had you any idea when you came round how badly you were burned? You know, I, I didn't until after I woke up. It was, um, I, I had to be told exactly what my injuries were. And did you have any hesitation much later when you were offered the chance of a facial transplant? You know, when I decided um, that I was going to go forward and see if I was a candidate for a face transplant, I never looked back. So I, I always had a certain confidence and security that that was what I really needed at the time. And, and you, of course, were a nurse with 20 years standing, so you knew all about the, the possibility of rejection and so forth. Um, and so in that case, the kind of questions you were asking, presumably, were uh, very educated questions about the chance of this actually working. Right. Well, I knew that my, I was not going to be an easy person to match. I was the first person to have not a complete match with my donor because I had been exposed to so much uh, other people's blood and tissues w through my other surgeries. So I knew it was not a guarantee that I, that I would be able to uh, keep my new face. Um, but I always had a certain faith that it would work out. It's been on those three years now, and it's, it's doing well. And you uh, can see to a certain extent now, and you have lips again, and presumably your quality of life has been altered phenomenally. Yes, I was, uh, had such severe scarring in my neck because um, my face was totally disfigured and I was on very large amounts of narcotics for many years, and um, I couldn't even keep my head up for any period of time. Uh, the scarring in my neck was quite severe. So it has, it has changed my life much, much for the better, and I am truly blessed. I wonder then, um, when you say it's changed your life, I wonder if it's given you pause for thought about the whole idea of identity and what creates your identity. Well, I, I had never contemplated my identity prior to this, but now that I had the experience of being a disfigured person and, then, uh, and now a person that has a new face, I, it has been quite strange to look in the mirror nowadays. Um, I actually had my first dream last week of, in my dream, me with my new face. And I hadn't had a dream yet. So, you know, we are very connected to our identity through our face. And I have always sort of been concentrating on the core of who I am mm -hmm. because my looks have changed so dramatically over uh, a short period of time. Now, you also met the daughter uh, of your donor. What was that experience like? That was a wonderful experience. I met her prior to my press conference when they revealed my face in, on May 1st in 2013. I met her the night before by her request. And we've, we have a great relationship. I go with her uh, traveling on occasion to speak here in the United States. 
and uh, we, we communicate on a regular basis. And she's just a lovely person. Her, her mother had, uh, you know, was a donor, uh, was an organ donor, and Narinda allowed her face to be uh, donated as well. And, and it's just been such a blessing, and I let her know that. And um, now you do talk about your story as an inspirational story for other people. But I wonder now um, your um, attitude towards your attacker, who of course was your estranged husband. How has that changed? I, I totally forgave him in 2010. It, that also was a blessing. It was not a difficult thing to do. And I believe that was because I was secure and really moving forward with my life. So the forgiveness part came quite easily to me to forgive him because I was also aware the more energy I put on the past and what happened and the unfairness of it was just going to hold me down in that negative space. And I, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be in that negative space. I wanted to just move forward the best I could. So forgiveness actually was one of those, one of those necessities to my, to my own freedom. Carmen, thank you very much for joining us.